You've tried diets, exercise, even calorie tracking apps, but the weight keeps coming back. What if the real reason is your brain? Welcome to Psychiatry Simplified. I'm Dr. Sunil Reggae, psychiatrist and educator. Obesity is often blamed on willpower, laziness or poor habits. But what if those beliefs are missing the most important organ? The brain is not just passively responding to food, it's actively deciding whether you're hungry, what you crave, and how much energy you burn. In this video, we'll break down how your brain regulates hunger, reward, and weight. And we'll explore why new treatments like GLP-1 agonists, originally developed for diabetes, are now transforming obesity management. What's often forgotten is that the human brain evolved to prioritize survival. And for most of history, that meant find food, avoid starvation. Inside the hypothalamus live neurons like AGRP, that drive hunger, and POMC, promote satiety. These act as your brain's internal accelerator and brakes for appetite. Hormones like leptin, which signals satiety, ghrelin stimulates hunger, orexin increases appetite when glucose is low, and CCK triggers fullness via the vagal signaling. All modulate this system. But in obesity, this system misfires. Leptin levels are high, but the brain becomes leptin resistant. Ghrelin spikes even when you're full. Orexin continues to stimulate appetite despite adequate energy. The result, chronic hunger and impaired feedback loops. Now here's where it gets really interesting. We don't just eat because we're hungry. We eat because of how food makes us feel. There are two systems driving eating behavior. One, the homeostatic eating, driven by energy balance. This is your brain saying, I need fuel. Two, hedonic eating, driven by reward and pleasure. This is your brain saying, that chocolate cake looks amazing. I want it, even though I'm full. In obesity, the hedonic system overrides the homeostatic one. So even when you're physiologically full, the brain keeps saying more. This is especially true in environments with hyperpalatable, high calorie foods, which light up the reward system like addictive drugs. Now add dopamine to the mix. The mesolimbic reward pathway from the ventral tegmental area that houses dopamine neurons to the nucleus accumbens, the reward center, is where food becomes pleasure. Ghrelin and orexin both stimulate dopamine, increasing the reward value of food. Over time, just like an addiction, the brain's reward systems become blunted. You need more food to experience the same pleasure. This isn't just poor self-control, it's neuroadaptation. That's why people regain weight after diets. The brain is stuck in a loop, seeking reward, suppressing satiety. Enter GLP-1 receptor agonists, like liraglutide, semaglutide, terzepatide. They started off as diabetes medications, but the weight loss effects were remarkable. Why? Because they don't just act on the gut, they act centrally on the brain. GLP-1 targets the hypothalamus to reduce hunger, the brainstem to enhance satiety, and the reward circuits to curb cravings. They reduce the psychological hunger, not just physical hunger. Some even show neuroprotective and anti-inflammatory effects, potentially improving cognition and mood. This overall effect is also why they're being repurposed as anti-addiction agents, because the hedonic hunger is just like addiction. For the first time, we're targeting the cause, not just the calorie count. So how is this relevant to psychiatry? We know that if you've taken antipsychotics like olanzapine or clozapine or quetiapine or some antidepressants like mirtazapine, you may have gained weight rapidly. That's because they impact the hypothalamus, dopamine serotonin pathways and appetite regulating hormones. They increase appetite, reduce satiety and alter energy expenditure. Add the psychological hunger to the mix and it's not just weight gain, it's a metabolic storm. Agents like metformin, topiramate and GLP-1 agonists can help mitigate these effects. But understanding why the weight has gained is the first step in reversing it. So let me summarize all of this for you. The final takeaway is the brain is the missing piece. Obesity isn't just about calories in versus calories out. It's about a dysregulated brain trying to adapt to a world it wasn't designed for. Understanding the neurobiology of hunger, reward and metabolism allows us to move beyond shame and blame. It opens up new frontiers like GLP-1 agonists and reframes obesity as a brain-based, treatable 
condition. If this video resonated with you, subscribe and share. And join me as we continue to simplify psychiatry through the lens of science, compassion, and clarity. I'm Dr. Sunil Rege from Psychiatry Simplified. Until next time, stay curious. Bye-bye.